Okay, so coaches poll came out. Uh, four Texas teams ranked. We have number seven, Texas A&M, number 10, Baylor, number 18, Texas, and number 25, Houston. So after I just said we talked way too much about the Power Five, let's talk more about the Power Five. Because <laughs> why is Texas 18? And also, why did Texas receive who, – who, who put them at number one? One coach in the country put Texas at number one, <laughs> and I want to know who it is because it <laughs> has to be a joke because it's funny and it – it got traffic on Twitter, yeah. credit to them. And also, I think it's obvious coaches don't care about this poll. No. Yeah, it should be renamed the SID poll. Sure. Because that's who does the or poll. Or the director of ops poll. Right, <laughs> right. Yeah, maybe they do the first one. Sure. Uh, yeah, but yeah, then yeah. they don't do another one mm. for the rest of the year, right? Yep. So, like, that, that uh, it should be the SID poll. Um, I have no idea what happened with the Texas first place vote. I'd imagine it was a mistake. Maybe somebody, somebody was trying A&M. to vote yeah. Texas A&M right. number one, which is also kind of weird. Uh, but yeah, I know it's not Steve Sarkeesian because he doesn't have a vote. Right. So we can, you know, Kirk Bowles is like trying to get to the bottom of this. <laughs> I love Kirk for it because he like tweeted out. That's like, such a Jeff, Kirk Bowles like, thing. <laughs> he, he's like, uh, a source tells me Jeff Trailer wasn't the one who like voted for Texas or whatever. I was like, your source is Jeff Trailer. You know, <laughs> right, like you could have just right. said Jeff Trailer tells me that I did not vote Texas number one. I thought that was really funny. <laughs> so keep doing God's work, Kirk Bowles. Yes. Keep doing it. It's got to be a joke. I mean, there's no, bo- I no way that has seriously a either a mistake or just. Just like, uh, I'm going to do this. Right. You yeah. know, like, but I, I hope it was Kansas's coach. Oh, yeah. Lipo and his Lipo. Right. <laughs> yeah. <You know>? like, <laughs> it probably like, was. Because like, oh, yeah, we're yeah. going to go, we're going to go in there and beat them again yeah. this year. Yeah. <laughs> They'll be number yeah. one. Yeah. It's going to be, uh, who's the, is it Terry Bowden? You will him? Right. The, the right. He's like, yeah, we yeah. got him. Yeah. We got him. Yeah. We're going to yeah. get the number I'd imagine that was a mistake. I still, if you look at our magazine, we have Baylor in front of A&M in the poll. And I, for me, it's because there's a bigger question mark at quarterback for Texas A&M. Oh, yeah. There is. I know who Baylor's quarterback is. Mm-hmm. I, I don't know who A&M's quarterback mm-hmm. is sitting in this chair right now. Like, I don't know if it's Max Johnson. I don't know if it's Haynes King. I don't know if Connor Wigman becomes that guy by midseason if things don't go right. Right. For me, it's hard to rank a team in the top ten that's not Alabama, Ohio State, Clemson, that doesn't have a – bona fide that's your dude at quarterback mm-hmm. that's such a big question mark and it's why they went eight and four last year like talent's not a problem at a they beat mm-hmm. alabama they're good they can yeah. beat anybody on their schedule they can also lose to any of those sec teams on the schedule and when you don't have consistent quarterback play that margin of error is so small you got to play perfect like you got to run the ball well you got to play defense you can't turn the ball over you got to do that every single week i have not seen a&m consistently be able to do i haven't seen a&m win 10 games sure Mm -hmm. no exactly until that happens i don't know why they're just like this odd automatic top 10 team i think Mm -hmm. baylor's the top ranked team in the state or should be i mean preseason polls i mean they're they're guesses right especially when media polls are gonna be guessed right we'll see we'll see the media poll when that comes out mine will look very stupid by the end of the year sure i mean they all, all do and so like i one coaches don't pay attention to other anybody like they're literally when they yes it is a cliche that they say oh we're focused on week one that's literally all these guys are focused on like they're yeah. worried about you know seth luttrell is worried about dana dimmel dana yeah. dimmel is worried about seth luttrell right they're worried about that week zero jeff game. trailer is worried about dana holgerson right exactly they're worried <laughs> about worried. that first game they have not looked uh, jeff trailer's not sitting there being like well, i don't know houston number 25 right know, yeah sure <laughs> he's obvi- they obviously play houston but like they're not he's like not concerned huh, with texas at huh, number who's uh, they're whatever, 25 but 18. they're not 23 you know yeah. like he's right. not sitting there filling it out very methodically so um it's always a talking point it's always like a nice little thing for us right the media loves to do stuff like this to be like oh who's the one that put whatever it's here a, it's early august man we sure need, we need as much it's fair you can, as much you can only ask, you can only ask jimbo what's he think of the quarterback position so many times yeah. after like two days of practice so like <laughs> eventually you got to move on to something else so yeah. you know yeah, that leads me to a really cool idea though like mm-hmm. it'd be great to know how long each of these coaches spent on the coaches poll sure you yeah know, like right. i want it to be like That's jeff trailer Here's his poll. Yeah. One minute, 22 seconds. Right. You know, like, I want <laughs> right. those stats. Right. And, and what what coaches pick it's or, all, or that it, participate in the coaches poll? It's just is a it, random it assignment. you got to be oh, there okay, for a couple it. years. Right. They try to spread it out across the country in different conferences and okay. stuff. You know, they don't want, like, it all to be Power 5 right. schools or all SEC schools. So it's kind of like as one coach leaves, they find another one to, to fill that spot type got deal it. based on tenure and, and region and conference. Gotcha. Yep. So okay. yeah. So yeah. Uh, that came out. We'll be paying attention to more polls, obviously, as they roll AP out, polls so. out Monday. There we go. Mm-hmm. So that'll be. Uh, that's kind of usually the first like the one people look at. Yeah. yeah the ones is like oh, okay. Here's Take where seriously. actually people kind of thinking this uh, the season is going to sway in the beginning. So anyway, uh, moving on to SMU. Let's get into this donor group. 
and M, uh, SM, SMU has donors? What? 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 <laughs> what? That's a shock. Money. Crazy. <laughs> wonder if there's a car associated with any of this. Um, so they announced earlier this week that they're jumping in on the booster-driven NIL deal. $36,000, which right now puts them number one in the country as far as booster-driven team-wide NIL deals, of course, passing up Texas Tech, who was 25000 yep. I believe, at the Matador Club. So, surprisingly, <laughs> on the Hill, there's money. Who knew, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What, do you, what, do you, what are your thoughts, Craven? You know, SMU getting – I like that, one, there was a lot of criticism towards SMU for not getting in the Big 12, right? That's kind of – some people may have seen that as like, oh, that's a ceiling for that program. They're not getting up to that next level, whatever. Well, here's them flashing some cash, right? Mm -hmm. And is this kind of an indication of saying – we're gonna we're gonna make our move as the quote unquote best of the rest. Yeah, uh, Chris Vanini wrote a really good article for the Athletic that made me mad because it was a really good idea, and I wish I would have <laughs> uh, thought of it. Yeah, I wish I, I would have thought articles. about it. Yeah, I hate those. Yeah, yeah I, I hear comedians talk about that, like when they hear a good joke and they're sure. like, ah, like that. Like so, he kind of wrote about how like SMU was given the death penalty for giving out money, <laughs> right. right? And now SMU is kind of like raising themselves out of this like G five rubble of being left out of conference realignment with money yep you know uh -huh. and so it's just kind of like this amazing 40-year turn that college football has had yep. um and so i think it's a great thing for smu right one of the th you don't have a full stadium mm -hmm. you, know, you don't have a rabid fan base what you do have is cash yep like at smu you got money you have donors you have alumni with a lot of money why not use that I we spent a lot of time on this show talking about how smu and utep are probably the two biggest losers of conference realignment mm -hmm. on paper mm -hmm. The more I kind of look at it, though, like if they're not going to go to the Big 12 and compete with those schools, they're going to they're going to be the new Cincinnati. Sure. They're going to be a new Houston. Right. Like when when those teams are gone from the American, who's there to compete with SMU? big fish in these small like, ponds? Yeah. Say one conference USA and they're moving up and like people are thinking that UTSA is going to be kind of that contender with SMU. UTSA, and I say this as a UTSA grad, UTSA doesn't have $36,000 per player to throw around. No. That's $8.5 million yeah. that they're dedicating to football and basketball players. One, That's one year. Mm -hmm. That's just in one year, right? That's before we get to coaches and trainers and staffs and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. SMU's like, it's like a $25 million, $30 million payroll, mm -hmm. basically. Like The other schools in the American do not have that kind of money, and I think this sets up SMU to be a real G5 darling. And if the playoffs expand like we think it's going to, I know a lot of those spots are going to go to the SEC teams. A lot of those spots are going to go to Big Ten teams. But if Cincinnati can make the top four in regular times, yeah. SMU an can make undefeated case. American SMU team in 2026 can make the 16-team playoffs yeah. as like the 13th seed. For sure. Easily. And that's all. That's what this is. That's mm -hmm. the goal. And so I, I think they've really – I think this is a, an act of intent. Yeah. You know, that we are not going anywhere. We have a few advantages, one of them being our checkbooks, and we're going to use those advantages. Good for Rhett Lashley, good for SMU. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think that the thing, because the rumor is that USC is now mulling over what they're going to offer. I think uh, that news broke yesterday that they're going to kind of conjure up something to make. I'm curious to see what these program booster driven, right, roster wide payrolls are going to be. Because mm -hmm. that's what I'm really curious about, because I don't think. I don't think we're going to see it at like the Alabamas because they know the individual players can just get blank, right? I don't yes. know. They might do it, right? There might be something where, you know, Alabama throws out 50, right, per. Possible, absolutely. But I also think that SMU and Tech, they know that not everybody's going to get something, mm -hmm. right? They know very much that the center for Tech might probably isn't going to get an NIL deal on his own. So they're going to make sure he's covered. If you're at Alabama, you're getting something yeah, yeah. regardless. Everyone's getting something. And so I think that there is a more there's more of an incentive for these, I want to say smaller schools, Texas Power 5 school and SMU is obviously an upper G5 school, one of those border cases. But I do think that we're, I don't know if we're going to see, I think USC might, we're not going to see a bunch of USC's, right? I don't think Notre Dame, Texas, USC, Alabama, all those. I don't think we're going to see like a widespread array of these program donor driven things. I think we'll see individual cases here and there because if you are, 
the running back at Alabama, you're fine, right? Mm-hmm. If you are the quarterback at Texas, you're fine. You're the wide receiver at Notre Dame, you're fine. <laughs> I think you'll you'll just be okay well, regardless. Where, where recruits if, signing with Alabama to get more than thirty six k. I was about to say, right? For, right that's a pay cut, right? For my, yeah, for that my is entire a pay life. Cut. I'd imagine for for most people's entire lives, you know. So exactly. Like, They're not worried about a baseline. I think for with SMU those guys. and Tech, what these collectives do is they keep them out of the arms race in recruiting. Yeah, they mm-hmm. can go. Hey, we're not. We can't. We're not going to give you a hundred grand. But here's what we're not leaving you out to snap. dry either. Right, but you're going to make some money. Yeah. You know, and, and if you come here and, and you're a star, you can make even more money than that. Mm-hmm. But, like, here is, here's what we offer. Sure. You know, like, we, you, we're not going to haggle with you. We're not going to, like, oh, well, what's Texas offering you? 80 grand? Well, we'll give you 90. Like, we're not right. going to do that. You get 25K. Yeah. And, and I think that's a very smart thing to do because, you know, there's 20 programs that are the haves that can recruit whoever they want, and guys will go there because – not only is there a short-term gain because mm-hmm. of those boosters have been giving them money for years, right? But there's also a long-term. If you're going to Alabama, you don't care about 25 grand because you're trying to make 25 million oh, sure. yeah. in, three, in three years, right? That's not as true for SMU players. It's not as true for Texas Tech players. Like, sure, you get a Patrick Mahomes every now and then, but for the most part, you know, those guys aren't getting into the NFL in the same way that Alabama or Georgia or Clemson are getting into the NFL. Mm-hmm. So get your money. This may be the biggest earned time of your life, right? Or at least of your young life. Sure. Go and get that money. That's not as true at Alabama. But I would be curious to see what that number would be. I would right? be too. Like right. what, Texas, that is an interesting thought. If Texas thought. starts a collective, what is that number? I was about to say, because USC is such a, uh, an outlier case, right? Nobody, Alabama's not worried about what USC is doing, yeah. right? Because the USC They're trying gonna, to keep kids in California. Exactly. Yeah. Keep yeah. kids on the West Coast. Stop them from going to Oregon. Stop them from you know one or two going out to the Midwest or SEC. I mean, Al- the Heisman Trophy winner at Alabama is a California kid. Sure. Like, exactly. Bryce Young's a California kid. Exactly. Yeah. They're, They're trying, trying to, to stop the bright guys. And right. right. But what happens if LSU announces of NIL? It, it takes, it's going right. to take one power, right. right? And I think not even a power. I think like... One if, competitor. If if Ole Miss right. announces, one, one right, it doesn't have to be the echel- upper echelon. If it's just Ole Miss says, boom, we're offering 50 to every student. Yeah. You're like, oh, then Alabama's like, now well, start okay, about what's it. happening here? Or Tennessee, right? Somebody right. who has like a legacy, who's not happy with their recent run yeah, of I form. mean, if Tennessee goes, we're going to give 150 grand to every single player on this roster. Right. That changes a lot. That yeah. changes a lot. LSU starts waking up, right? It's like, ooh, now right. we got to start raise up in six figures. So... Yeah, I don't think USC. I think we'll wait to see what that number is for USC. I haven't seen the number exactly. I don't know if they've released a number or if anybody's reported that. But we'll see what that number is, and then we'll see maybe if there's one because there's going to be one, right? The SEC, that region's such mm-hmm. a passionate region. Some booster club's going to be like, yeah, we got it. Like you said, if you're a middle of the road SEC team, if you're mm-hmm. Arkansas, if you're Ole Miss, if right. you're Mississippi, State, if you're right there, right? right? Arkansas, Ole Miss, like right there. That on, could like, be being, the that could be the thing that jumps you up. Yep. And, uh, I think it's a benefit all around. It's benefit for the players too because there's a there's a contract. Yeah. Yes. And it's out there. Yes. Like if you go to SMU and somebody doesn't pay you your fifty grand, you can do public outcry. There's yeah. no Trans Am <laughs> action right. here with if with, you, with if Eric. If you go Dickerson. to Tennessee and they've offered you a million dollars behind the table and you only get two hundred K of it, there's nobody to complain to. Right. Mm-hmm. Right? Like sure. maybe you sue people. I don't know how you get into that, but like it's on it's it's above board sure and that yeah. that helps i think a lot because you know what you're getting into and i think that's why some coaches are into this because there's there's transparency yes right you know the matador club's putting their name on this right and so it says you go if if, if somebody's not getting paid their 25k joey mcguire is going to the matador club right. like why is my Cody campbell what right, are you doing why is yeah. my left tackle not getting his 25k right, right? exactly so 100 yeah so I, I i think this is this will be an interesting thing i think that obviously just two programs have done it right now in the state trickle effect We'll see. This is kind of, in my opinion, what, what I imagined when I saw the NIL yes. kind of thing yes. happening. So.